Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here with me today. And with Maple, we see a lot of Oakley. Oakley is very social. <laughs> Maple really enjoys hanging out up at the house, whereas Oakley really does patrol the entire property. So we tend to see him more often when we're wandering around the farm together. It's 9 a.m. right now and it is already warming up. I'm sure by noon it's probably going to be around 12 degrees or so is very exciting. It definitely feels like spring. We had what we call up here a fall spring in February where it felt like spring was just around the corner, but no, we got hit with winter again. This definitely feels more authentically like spring and the weather forecast tells me that it is going to be very warm. I mean, we hardly have any snow at this point. By the end of the week, my chickens are out of the coop happily enjoying some sunshine. Hi guys. <laughs> I end up uh, locking my chickens up usually as soon as the garden goes in at the end of May, just because they get in there. And especially with the squash, they can cause so much damage with squash. But we have this big run, whoa, it's <laughs> so bright, all the way over here. And then all summer long, I throw weeds and grass clippings and things like that in there for them to munch on. Good morning. We have a cow that we're weaning right now off her mama. I should have done this months ago, but we're doing it now and she's none too happy about it. Her mama's happy about it though. She hasn't even made a sound. Hi honey. This is Fern. This was the blonde calf that was born beginning of August, I think. And she now looks exactly like her mama. So why are we down at the barn? We are going to be moving the sheep outside. So our sheep have been in the barn now ever since um, <laughs> the lambs were born. They're used to getting their grain and their alfalfa pellets from me when I go to the barn. I want to get them outside because it's just so beautiful outside and animals of course do better outside just like we humans do. I think I'm gonna have the easiest time moving Hazel and Cupcake out first because Cupcake will probably just follow me and then hopefully Hazel will follow her. Uh, we weaned Cupcake off the bottle two days ago and she seems to be doing really well. So I'm just gonna keep a close eye on her and if I notice that her weight's dropping or anything like that, I will uh, put her back on the bottle. Um, excuse me, lady. How are you doing? <laughs> Coming to check things out? You be nice, Maple. Hello, shall we get some green and you can follow me? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Good girl. What do you think? Hmm, what do you think, Cupcake? <laughs> out in the big wide world. You go see mom? Come on, little one. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy having them outside like this. I'm sure it's going to take a little time for them to get adjusted to this whole entire situation. <laughs> and it's really nice to see that all the lambs are looking so healthy. I would actually say that Cupcake is almost the same size as her brothers. Look at that. <laughs> and all the mamas are looking nice and healthy, which is great. <laughs> uh, yes, I hear you. I do. A couple of great things about this is that everybody mixed together no problem, the ram has no interest in the babies at all. He's not showing any signs of aggression or anything like that, which is great. So I have decided I'm going to keep my sheep, um, the ewes that I have, and keep the ram that I have. So I had been considering potentially either selling the sheep or selling the ram and trying some new genetics, thinking that perhaps there was a genetic issue with these particular sheep, just because I had such a heck of a time with lambing. But in doing a lot of research, talking to lots of you who are sheep breeders, talking to other sheep breeders, I have decided to give it another go with this particular flock of sheep. Let me run you through all the reasons why quickly. Um, I think that a lot of the issues that I experienced this time around, so we had one lamb that was born with a deformity and didn't survive. I had one sheep that developed pregnancy toxemia, and then I had 
almost all my sheep, excluding one, be just not great moms <laughs> at all. They just didn't know what they were doing. Um, and I ended up having to keep them locked up in small pens for a couple of weeks so that they could bond with their babies and all of that. But as you can see, everybody's bonded now and I'll be keeping a really close eye on them over the next couple of days just to make sure that the lambs are still at nursing and all of that. Um, but things are going really well at this point. So in looking back, hindsight is always 2020, right? I can see that there were a couple of things that I could have done to improve the odds of a successful lambing. The first thing is that I could have made sure that my hay was high enough in protein. We make our own hay here and we've been feeding the same hay for the last nine years and we have never had any issues. That being said, uh, because one of my sheep got pregnancy toxemia, the vet and a couple of other sheep breeders that I talked to said that I needed to increase the level of protein in my feed by feeding alfalfa. So we started feeding alfalfa right away as soon as we realized that that was an issue. The sheep are definitely doing great with it. They're producing lots of milk. Their babies are fat and healthy. Um, any of the lingering issues from the pregnancy toxemia in Hazel, the one brown ewe that got it, are have completely abated. She looks fantastic and her lamb looks fantastic, which is great. So I offer a loose sheep mineral to my sheep and then I also give them salt block and I'm also going to be giving them kelp. And there's a couple of farmers that I know that actually exclusively feed kelp for minerals to sheep because they're so high in the right minimal minerals that sheep need and they seem to do really well on it. So I'm gonna offer all the things <laughs> because then I'm probably gonna end up offering my minerals divided up into the different minerals rather than the mixed mineral that I'm using so that if they need a specific one, they can go to that bin. There's a lot of learning when it comes to bringing on new livestock, so I'm learning a lot. And then the other reason that I want to give these particular sheep another chance is because they were all first time moms and they had no idea what they're doing. And from what I've learned, sheep are kind of notorious for being not great moms right at the very beginning. Not all, but some. Mine obviously fall into the category of the ones that aren't great. And I think that when they have their second lamb, especially because one of the things that I'm gonna do differently, I was under the impression and everything that I had read and farmers I had talked to said to leave the sheep with the flock and then move them into a pen if required. And I think that all of my sheep would have done better if I had separated them out as soon as, you know, a week or two before they were going to lamb, put them in the barn, put them in a small pen and all of that. I think we would have had a lot more success with lambing and bonding and all of that. Because once I did get them into the pens alone with their babies, it definitely, all the issues I was having definitely improved quite a bit. So that'll be something that I do differently the second time around. And so, and the last thing is that the sheep and the ram are unrelated. And so in, the inbreeding issue wasn't actually a problem. And it's possible that the deformities that were in that one lamb were uh, selenium deficiency or some other type of nutritional deficiency, which just makes me feel terrible, but I won't let that happen again because I know better now, or potentially just a genetic one-off because that happens as well. So I'm going to run them for another year, breed them again, and then, um, and then we'll see. If we have a lot of the same issues again the second time around, then I'll obviously be making some major changes with the bloodlines that I have. But but I do feel like I should give them all a second chance. So that is what I'm going to do. And so what this does mean is that I will be selling Cupcake. So Cupcake is the uh, female, the little baby that we had that came out of the mom that had the toxemia. She got off to a bit of a rough start, but she's doing great now. So I will be selling her because she is related to the ram that I wanna be keeping. And I definitely want to keep him. He's such, he just has a beautiful temperament. His fleece is absolutely gorgeous. It's so soft and beautiful. And he's gentle with the babies, which is really good. He's gentle with people, which is really good. So I definitely wanna keep him. Uh, so that's, yeah, so that's where it's at. So if anybody would like to buy Cupcake, hit me up because she will be for sale as soon as she is weaned. Check on those sheep again and just make sure everybody's doing okay. I don't hear any of them calling, so that's good. And then grab my jacket and we'll head up to the house. I have not decided what I'm going to make today, so I'll decide that on the way up to the house and then we'll go make something yummy in the kitchen. Let's try to sneak in on the sheep. They're out exploring, munching on the hay. <laughs> well, you guys all look fantastic. It makes me really happy. 
That's awesome. All's well that ends well with the sheep. All right, I'm going to make a recipe out of the Cook's Kitchen Bible. This was one of the first cookbooks I ever had. My mom gave it to me in my early 20s. And throughout the many moves I've had since then, I lost this cookbook and I mentioned it, I can't remember when it was, but six months ago, maybe a year ago, here on my channel and somebody had one and sent it to me. Thank you so much. I don't have your name written on the inside of this cookbook, so I don't remember who it was that sent this to me, but I really, really appreciate it. I absolutely love it, and it gives me such strong nostalgic feelings whenever I open this cookbook up because I made a lot of these recipes when I was first learning how to cook. So we are going to make one that I haven't made out of this cookbook before, and that is a tuna lasagna with homemade pasta. If I can find this recipe, this is it in the cookbook. It is on page 96 of the Cook's Kitchen Bible cookbook. If I can find it online, I will link it for you down below, but I will run you through everything right now that you need to make this recipe. So you need one quantity, it says a fresh pasta dough, or 12 ounces, or 340 grams of oven ready dried lasagna. So I'm gonna be making my own lasagna noodles today because I am absolutely obsessed with homemade pasta. It is so delicious. One small onion, a clove of garlic, four ounces of mushrooms. You can use fresh mushrooms, or in this case, I am going to be using canned mushrooms. Four tablespoons of dry white wine, which is optional and I won't be using that today. One pint of white sauce. So I'm gonna show you how to make a simple white sauce today as well. A quarter pint of whipping cream, three tablespoons of chopped parsley, salt and pepper two seven ounce cans of tuna. So I am doubling this recipe when I'm doing it, but this is just the recipe for the base recipe. Two cans of pimentos. I am not using pimentos in this recipe either. Two and a half ounces of thawed frozen peas, four ounces of mozzarella grated, and one ounce of freshly grated Parmesan, which I'm also not using because I do not have any Parmesan. Let's have to sit for 15 minutes. For my eggs. <laughs> Shoot. So that's really unfortunate. Oh dear. Hang on. I just have to clean those up. I like starting my pasta out like this. And sometimes if the kneading gets a bit too much for my hands, I either get some help with that or throw it in my anchor drum. And, but I know you can use your food processor, but I haven't had the best luck with that. So I do it this way. So I just used two cups of flour, half a teaspoon of salt and three large eggs. This is probably gonna be enough. I don't know if I'll need to double it or not. We'll see. All right, we have our dough already here. I'm just gonna set this aside, cover it with a damp cloth while I'm getting the rest of this ready. Next up, we have to make a white sauce. Super easy, we're just gonna use butter, some flour, some milk. I am going to add some garlic powder, uh, probably a little bit of mustard powder and salt and pepper to season it. Gonna add around a quarter cup of butter. So we're gonna be adding our mushrooms, our onions, and our garlic, and our tuna, I believe. Let me double check that. So no, we're actually gonna add the tuna separately. So now that our milk is bubbling away, we're gonna add our flour, make a roux. So we just want to add a bit of milk at a time and let it thicken in between. Salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of ground mustard. I'm just gonna chop up some onions. Someone shared with me that Amazon is now carrying the goggles. These are called the original patented onion goggle. And one of you had sent the, me a pair of these 
at least a year ago now, and I needed a few more. So I got myself some more. So we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of parsley. We're going to add around a cup of cream to our white sauce. And you would add your white wine in here at this point. And now we'll add our onions and our garlic. I'm going to add just a little bit more cream to this. There. Sauce is all done. So we'll set that aside and make our noodles. So if you are going to use fresh mushrooms, then you want to put them in with your onions and your garlic. But since I am using canned mushrooms here. I'm just going to drain the liquid out. I think I'm only going to add one of those right now. And if I need the other one, I'll add the other one later, but it looks good the way it is. So somebody pointed out something that was really smart <laughs> when I was making it last time with my Atlas pasta maker is I was doing one piece and then I would adjust the size and keep doing it until it was the right size. So they said, instead of doing that, why don't you just do on the one size, all of your pieces and then adjust it to the next size. Just about there. We're getting close. One more. So this recipe says, so we need to boil our noodles, our beautiful lasagna noodles. I'm gonna cut these down to size. I have shared before that cooking is not my favorite thing to do. There's lots of other things that I would rather be doing than cooking. But as part of my job as mama for the last 27 years, it is something that I have learned how to do well over practice and just wanting to make good food for my family. But it isn't my favorite thing. <laughs> but I have to say, I really enjoy making homemade pasta. I find it super satisfying and I want to start getting into some fancier fun pastas. I watched somebody make them with herbs and they would put, they put herbs in it and then fold them in half and then rolled them through the uh, pasta maker. And I want to try doing that. I think that was pansies or something like that, that they did as well. I could probably run that one through one more time. It's just something extremely satisfying about it. And my goodness, it tastes amazing. some peas in my colander over here. Give them a rinse. Open up tuna. Oh, I did get a new can opener, by the way. Just a star frit one. And I love it. It doesn't make my hands hurt. So we want to cook these and then lay them on a tea towel one layer at a time to drain, the liquid to drain off. That's something I've never done before either. 
and then we get to do the fun part and actually assemble them. I'm excited. I think this is going to be delicious and I haven't had tuna in. I'm going to have to make some more sauce. Smells good. And our noodles. Okie dokie. Now we are going to take our peas and our tuna and we're going to put that over top of this. I'm just going to mix these together here so it's easier to do. Okay, and then mozzarella on top of this. some noodles. So we're gonna put some more peas and tuna on the top of this and then top it with the sauce. And I think I'm just going to add a little bit more cream to my sauce. Just go heat it up over on the stove, thin it out a little bit, and then pour that on the top, and then we'll top it with mozzarella. I have more noodles and more room in my pot, so I'm gonna add another layer. I made a little bit more sauce. And then I'll top this with some mozzarella. So now we're going to cover this up with some matzah, bake it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes at 350 degrees until it's nice and golden and bubbly. And I'm pretty sure delicious because my goodness, it smells good. Looks tasty, so let's cut into it. good. So I know that my kids are going to think this is just fantastic. It's a very kid friendly kind of flavor. Isn't that good? So you should give me a serving. <laughs> Dan thinks it's good too. So that's great. I love when a recipe, a new recipe is a hit. So if you want to try something new, as far as lasagna goes, and you haven't tried a tuna lasagna before, I highly recommend it. Super tasty. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. I just wanted to turn the camera back on and tell you what Dan just said. So he just took a big piece of it and he said that he thinks it might be the best thing that I've ever made and that maybe it's restaurant worthy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really, really good. It's absolutely delicious. I can think of so many variations on the same theme would be equally as delicious. So definitely give that recipe a try. Bye guys.